This is a 2002 Chevrolet Silverado 2500 HD, and today I'll show you how to replace the tie rods. The tie rods should be replaced when they're bent, damaged, have ripped boots, or when the ball joints have excessive play. The tie rods on this truck aren't showing any obvious signs of wear, but the owner says the steering feels loose, so he asked me to replace a number of common wear items in the steering linkage and suspension. I'll be making videos on everything I'm doing, so you might want to subscribe to catch the upcoming videos I haven't finished yet. Anyway, this is a very simple job if you have the right tools, so let's get to it. Here are the tools I used for this job. Impact wrench, torque wrench, 21 millimeter socket, 22 millimeter socket, 22 millimeter wrench, seven millimeter wrench, large adjustable wrench, three pound hammer, plastic mallet, needle nose pliers, flathead screwdriver, a floor jack, and two jack stands. For this job, I also needed a stool, a light, a creeper, rubber gloves, padded gloves, safety glasses, shop towels, a wheel chalk, and a new set of tie rods. There are links in the description for everything I used. I'll start by chalking a rear wheel and lifting the front of the truck onto jack stands, but if you don't have an impact wrench, you'll want to break loose the lug nuts first. The hub cover has plastic lug nuts, so be careful with them. The real lug nuts are torqued to 140 foot-pounds, so I was really happy I just bought this new impact wrench. Now we can start on the tie rods by loosening the lock nut with a 22 millimeter wrench. I used an impact wrench with a 21 millimeter socket to remove this nut from the ball joint, but you might have a cotter pin to remove first. I knocked out the ball joint with a three pound hammer, but you could use a tie rod puller or a pickle fork. Unscrew the tie rod end, counting the number of turns so the new one can be installed to the same length. I used a large adjustable wrench to remove the other end because I didn't have a wrench big enough, but it looks like a 36 millimeter wrench might fit. It's the same size as the old one. The grease in here looked old, so I scraped out as much as possible with a flathead screwdriver before installing the new tie rod. The owner of the truck said he had some grease at home that he would add later, but the new tie rods did come pre-greased from the factory. The tie rod ends came with grease zerks that I had to install with a seven millimeter wrench. Make sure to install the lock nut before the tie rod end and count the number of turns as you install them to match the ones you took off.
The tie rod ends also came with new castle nuts, but no cotter pins. Fortunately, I had some on hand, but you're probably going to want to buy some. The castle nut didn't line up with the hole for the cotter pin after I torqued it, so I tightened it a little more until I could get the pin through. Don't forget to tighten the lock nut. Now we can put the wheels back on and lower the truck back onto the ground. The lug nuts need to be torqued to 140 foot-pounds. Now the truck will need a front end alignment to keep the tires from wearing unevenly, but my job here is done. I've got a few more Silverado videos on the way, and hundreds of other videos already posted, so if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. Don't reach. How did they turn the wheel? Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm smart. Smart. Yeah. I know how cars work. <laughs> That's funny. I'm thinking about turning the wheel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>